Wonderful. All right. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, you You're know. Adam Cox from yes. Old Insurance <laughs> Maps, aren't you? Yes. I'm Jeff Meyer from Open Historical Maps. Splendid. Okay, here we are. Um, we'll do a little, I'll do a little introduction about uh, the old insurance map site, and then Jeff will talk a little about historical and historical map, and then you'll see how they can be combined, uh, and that's what we'll be kind of finishing with. Um, so this is a project I developed through my uh, master's thesis uh, last summer, well, a couple of years, but finished last summer at Louisiana State University. And I wanted to create kind of a collaborative georeferencing platform specifically around Sanborn fire insurance maps. Uh, I built it from the Library of Congress digital collection, which is vast and uh, really good. I encourage you to just check out their collections. And wanted to create a place where you could georeference in the browser, but then immediately have those that uh, content be available to use in other web services, download geotips. Um, and, and a special thing was focusing a lot on mosaics and kind of handling the sandborn volumes as a whole, because there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, it's open source software and there were oh, some right. of the components. No, no worries. Uh, and there'll be a link to the GitHub repo at the end. Um, so uh, just briefly, uh, sandborn fire insurance maps, probably many of you are familiar. Uh, they are from the mid 1800s to the mid 1900s. Uh, built or created for fire insurers, uh, fire insurance companies, and so they have all the information you would want, uh, building material, building use. As you can see, some numbers about how big the collection is, um, and the vast majority of them are in the public domain, and that was a nice thing about using the Library of Congress collection, because they had checked before they scanned them, so I don't have to think about that at all. Um, and a little bit of zooming in here, um, just to show some of the detail, uh, you can, I should have mentioned this up, up front, but you can go to the website now and there's a lot to explore. And you can zoom in there and see. Um, so they're used for genealogical research, historical research, environmental assessment, um, record, and that kind of thing. Uh, just hugely useful resource. And this was all about making that more accessible and uh, more uh, exposed to the general public. I would add one thing. Sanborn's kind of came out of nowhere in a time where like detailed city mapping wasn't really a thing. Building footprints weren't really a thing. You went from like vague, maybe there's a map there to like this level of mapping. And so it's a pretty amazing time capsule of this, you know, starting in the late 19th century. Yeah, and I also started, I like to think of them kind of as really old satellite imagery, <laughs> which they're not, but you know, they, they have a communication with them. So here's just a real quick overview of kind of how it set the workflow up for the site, um, because the workflow and kind of the steps is the core of the whole the whole thing. Uh, it's almost as easy as one, well, you know, it's pretty easy. Um, and from the home page, there's a way to find some of the content you get to kind of dig straight, straight in and start your referencing once you sign up, which is free, of course. Um, uh, and then we'll kind of go through each of these steps pretty briefly, but just to show the theory and kind of idea behind uh, how it and set it up. Um, oh, yeah. And I've started with Louisiana for the pilot project because I was at LSU and I live in New Orleans. Um, what I've been adding them here and there as people request. I see one requester here from Brooklyn. Um, at, at any rate, so there's more and more to look at on the site. So <clears throat> the first step that I set up I, as a preparation step, um, this is specifically to cut the pieces, uh, cut the pages into smaller pieces if necessary. This is important in sandboard maps because as you can see here, there's three different, three completely different maps on the same sheet. Um, so the same scanned image needs to be cut into pieces somehow, so each can be georeferenced individually. So I made a whole step, a whole first step for that. Um, and then the second step is actually with georeferencing. Um, one thing to point out about the interface is that once you add the third control point, as it's happening right now, there's a live preview that will show up and that kind of makes it easy to adjust and improve the georeferencing. Uh, but in general, it's a georeferencing interface like almost any other georeferencing interface. So we should ask, how many people here have georeferenced a map? How many people have georeferenced a historical map? Okay, wow. cool. And how many of you have seen a tool that automatically does that and generates the preview on the fly? 
This one. This is the one. That's the only one. <laughs> Thank you. Round of applause. Out of the box. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I threw this in right away because actually, if you're just interested in one piece of the one page, um, you can open that directly. So right away, once it's geo-referenced, it's now immediately uh, there's X, Y, Z endpoint URL endpoint that you can add into QGIS or into other leaflet open layers, etc. But I also added a link which will open this layer directly in open source sort of map, and you can get to that in a little bit too. Okay. Yeah. That button is cool. <laughs> this is my favorite feature right here. Very nice. Very nice work, guys. Um, so I will jump in. Oh, turn. No, I won't I jump in. I'll this, jump out. I snuck this in there. Yeah. There's um so when it comes to mosaics, these maps are separate pages and often those pages overlap each other. So I created this kind of volume level trimming interface, if that makes any sense, so that you are creating polygons that snap to each other all at once. And you don't trim that margins off of one piece necessarily. You're only you're only ever trimming them kind of as a whole. Um, and then this is what allows you to create a single uh, endpoint for the full mosaic, which is kind of the second option. And then, of course, you can view it right in the website. In fact, I encourage you to check this out if you are in downtown Richmond, because we are a little off from that. We're, we're not in the old, old map coverage here, but um, it works well on mobile, and you can see your location, which is very entertaining to walk around. Lack of foresight. In the sense. Yeah, Sam was like, what's that? <laughs> I want to know if you're going to use the next part. This is about open historical map. Has everyone here heard of open historical map? Oh, okay, okay, it's a little bit. So we have taken the open street map stack and we've kind of juiced it up a little bit out of the time slider, the like hyperpal server, a few other things to enable time based mapping. So you can go back in time, see when. Uh, Virginia before it was split during the Civil War and uh, ancient history there. But the um, the main thing is that we're breaking a lot of OSM rules. Like just because something's not on the ground now doesn't mean it's not okay to map. In fact, it's not on the ground now. We watch the map, and we're very import friendly and in need of more people. We've got a great community that's growing, but if you know, one of the biggest barriers has been finding old maps to trace. And that's where Adam's wonderful creation comes in. Uh, you can go easily from this page here under downloads and web services and get things going in your editor immediately. So it's very, very simple. I mean, I could go through the steps here, but really it's go to old insurance maps, find a map you want to trace, click a button. And if you can use ID, you're off to the races. It will open up the uh, mosaic inside the editor, the one area where you may want to use something to remove kind of like logic data. Is this is something that OHM has the ID editor or start a and name filter, which you will want to do, otherwise you'll see all the modern data uh, or older data. Uh, I, uh, one just detail about that last part is you should be uh, logged into ID before you oh, yes. hit that link, I found, because yeah, the way, the way it all works, it's best to be logged in already. And I would point out one of the different editor, whether that's you just in weird case or Johnson, you can just use the XYZ tiles and pop that in there and copy the imagery over there. And that's where I spend most of my time. Um, so, next steps. Yeah. Um, what are you going to talk about tomorrow? Yeah. So, tomorrow morning, you can do this for your own. You can try it out and check it out. You need a laptop all on your mind. That's good for one person. Um, but we will have a math on or a workshop. We're going to go through that uh, entire workflow. We're going to, if you want to trace some maps or maybe see what that's like in old insurance maps, you can do that. So if you're on mosaics, we're going to trace some of those old buildings and maybe talk about some of the uh, irregularities. Like, you know, really good GR effort that, but it's off from where it really should be by just a little bit. So how do you deal with that? And then uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, I've added, people have requested, especially to open historical map, a few different users have requested new maps to be added. I've added a little form for that. Um, you know, it's not a whole, it's it's automated on my side, but it's not automated for you to add more content at the moment, but it's kind of, you know, 
hopefully in the works to, to make that easier. Um, and I'd be, uh, I'm always looking for people to collaborate with or to help sponsor different aspects of the site. It's been a passion side project for a long time and it will continue to be that for now. Um, but I could use, of course, any help. And I've been starting to do uh, geo reference thons, which sounds, well, it is really dorky and really fun. <laughs> um, uh, good. Okay. <laughs> Not everyone thinks that, but and I don't think that. Um, but that's something anyone could do anytime because you can just once once you know once the volume is started, then you and four people could just get together and and uh, and work on it together. Or you know, again, asynchronous granular um, steps are what makes the whole thing work. So you don't have to do it all in one sitting or anything like that. Um, and of course, you can find uh, find the project on GitHub. Um, if you want to dig more into the code behind it um, and get in touch with us. And, and before we get into any questions, if you have any, I just want to say I'm, I'm the tag along and a little bit of the cheering section. But have you guys all, I mean, most people have seen sandboards. People are interested in old maps. They're all over the place. They're on a bunch of sites. Library of Congress has their own collection. Nobody has, and some people geo-reference them. Nobody has really put it all together to make a single place where you can go and see all these mosaic tiles for this wonderful 35,000 volume set, hopefully in the future, uh, before Adam has done this. So a lot of simple ideas. He's the first person to really put together, and I think he gets a round of applause for that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, definitely cheering section.